Hi, this is Dave from Notes and Volts, and welcome to part two of my KiCad series. In part one, we created a new KiCad project file and drew up a schematic, so please watch that part first if you haven't already. In this episode, we're going to create and assign circuit board footprints to our components. KiCad comes with a library of footprints for common components, but if you are using a non-standard part like this push button, you're going to need to create your own. The footprint file contains the drill holes, solder pads, and silkscreen graphics for the circuit board. Unlike other PCB software, KiCad treats schematic symbols and footprints as completely separate objects. So before you design your circuit board, you need to assign a footprint to each part in your schematic. So let's take a look at how this is done. Once again, I'd like to thank my sponsor JLC PCB for helping to make this series possible. Visit jlcpcb.com for high quality circuit boards, quick shipping, and a great price. That's jlcpcb.com. All right, let's do it. To get started, let's open up our PCB tutorial project and double click on the .sch file that we created in part one. Now that we have our completed schematic, what we need to do is assign a circuit board footprint file to each component. To start, we're going to need to design a custom footprint for our unique shaped button because we're pretty sure that KiCad doesn't have one built in. So let's start there. The first thing I like to do is examine the part for any markings or part numbers. And I did find one on this labeled R16503. With a quick Google search, I was able to find a data sheet for this part number. And even though this seems to have all the measurements I need, I still like to double check things with some calipers. So with this information in hand, let's get started designing a footprint for this part. First, we'll go up to the top toolbar and click on the footprint editor icon. Once the editor is open, go up and click on the new footprint icon. To start, we need to give the footprint a name. So I'll call it button and then the part number. This should make it easy to find later. And here's our new component. And you can see there's the component name and a reference symbol. The reference will be replaced with the name we gave the component back on the schematic sheet. All right, to start drawing the footprint, let's refer back to the data sheet. The first thing I noticed was the diameter of the part that will rest on the PC board is 15 millimeters. So let's start by drawing a 15 millimeter circle. Since this part is in metric, I'm gonna make sure the millimeters button is pressed. Now I'll go to the grid size dropdown and select a 0.5 millimeter grid. When you're designing footprints and circuit boards in KiCad, the grid is a very useful tool. I chose 0.5 millimeters for this grid because I have to draw a 15 millimeter diameter circle. KiCad draws circles with radius. So I'm going to have to draw a 7.5 millimeter radius circle and the 0.5 millimeter grid will make this very easy. So whatever you're trying to draw, pick the best grid size for that operation. Before we actually draw the component, let's take a second to see how you navigate the grid in KiCad. If you look carefully, you'll see a horizontal and vertical line in the middle of the screen. Where those two lines intersect is the X and Y zero of the grid. As I move the cursor, notice how the grid position changes at the bottom of the screen. The cursor will always snap to the next grid point, which if you remember, we set at 0.5 millimeters. Now, if I hit the space bar, it will zero out the DX and DY coordinates. This is a handy feature that allows you to position objects relative to each other instead of the middle of the diagram. By choosing the correct grid size and using these coordinates, you can accurately place things on the grid. Now that we're up to speed, let's start drawing our footprint. We'll start by zooming out and dragging the label and reference out of the way to make room for our circle. To move something, place the cursor over the object and then press the M key on the keyboard. 
I want this circle to be drawn on the silk screen layer of the circuit board, so I'll make sure that front silk screen is selected in the layers menu. Now I'll click the add graphic circle tool. I'll click on the center of the grid and then drag the circle out until my X coordinate is 7.5 millimeters. This will give me my 15 millimeter circle. Now I'm going to set the grid to 0.1 millimeters and zoom right in. Now I'm going to draw a small circle in the middle of the footprint. This will help with alignment on the circuit board later. Now that we have an outline for our part, let's add the solder pads. If we refer back to the diagram, you'll notice the lower legs of the button are located about 4 millimeters down from the x-axis and 3 millimeters on either side of the y-axis. There's no decimal point in any of these measurements, so we'll set the grid to 1 millimeter. Now I'll select the pad tool and measure down 4 millimeters from the X and 3 millimeters on either side of the Y and place two pads. Now we'll refer back to our diagram and notice that the top two legs are located 0.5 of a millimeter above the x-axis and 2.6 millimeters on either side of the y. So let's set our grid down to 0.1 millimeter and then we can place pads at these locations. When you're using a small grid like this, sometimes it's easier to use the arrow keys to move the cursor rather than the mouse. And there we go, all our solder pads are in place. Now as we know, the legs on our component aren't circular, but actually rectangular in shape. So we're going to have to reshape these pads to fit. The legs on the diagram are shown as 3 millimeters wide, but when I actually measure the component, they're closer to 2 millimeters. So that's why I always like to double check the measurements. To edit the pad, place the cursor on top of it and press the E key. This will bring up the pad properties window. Notice that the pad has two parts. One is the drill size, which is the actual size the hole will be drilled in the circuit board. And the other is the pad size, which is the size of the ring of copper that will surround the hole. To make the pads fit the rectangular pins on the button, I'm going to change the pad type to oval. Now I'll set the dimensions to 2.4 by 4 millimeters. Next I'll set the drill shape to oval and set the size to 1.4 by 3 millimeters. It's a good idea to use metric for your drill sizes since a lot of board manufacturers are overseas and do use the metric system. It's okay to not use metric, but they'll probably just round your drill up to the next metric drill size. And there's our new pad shape. Now to get the other pads to match, right click on the pad and select new pad settings. This way you don't have to edit each pad separately. Now I need to think back to the schematic and make sure the pad numbers match up to the corresponding pins on the schematic symbol. If they don't, just press the E key to edit the pad and change the number to the correct one. To make the footprint a little cleaner on the circuit board, I'm going to move the reference name inside the circle. Now that the footprint is done, we need to save it into a library. I'm going to do this by clicking the Create New Library and Save Current Footprint button. We'll create the new library in our project folder, so we'll leave the path as is, and I'll give the library a name, which will be PCB Tutorial. Now click OK to save. Now we'll just click the X to exit out of the footprint editor and we can click exit without save since we saved the footprint earlier.
All right, now that our footprint is done, we can go on to the next step, which is assigning a PC board footprint to each of our schematic components. We do this by running the CV PCB tool. Once CV PCB opens up, you'll see a list of all the KiCad footprint libraries on the left and a list of the footprints contained in the selected library on the right. The middle window shows the components listed in our schematic. As we scroll down the library list on the left, you'll notice the library that we created, which is PCB Tutorial, is not there. We're going to have to add that manually. Go to the Preferences menu and select Footprint Libraries. Now click on the Append with Wizard button. Make sure Files on my computer is selected and click Next. Now we'll browse down until we get to our project folder, open it up, and select our library folder. Now click Next until you get to the final window. Now we can select if we want our library to be available to all our projects or just the current one. We'll select the current project only. Click OK and you should see our PCB tutorial library appear in the left hand list. Now go up and select SW1 from the center components list. Select PCB Tutorial Library and you'll see the footprint we made show up. Just click on it to add it to our component. We'll add the same footprint to Switch 1 through Switch 4. For our resistors, we'll scroll down to the Resistor Through Hole Library and click on the first resistor in the component list. You'll notice that this library has a large number of choices for all the different sizes of resistors that are available. To see what a footprint will look like, click on the View Selected Footprint tool. Now when I select a footprint, it will show up in this window and I can see what it looks like. For this project, I'll choose the Axial 3.6mm footprint. Add the same footprint to the remaining resistors. Finally, we'll click on the Save Footprint Association button to save our work and exit. To finish off, we need to send our footprint selections to the PC board software. Do this by clicking on the Generate Netlist button, click on Generate, and click Save. This will create the necessary file. All right, that will do it for this part. Hopefully you have a better understanding about how to use uh, footprints in KiCad. In part three, we'll actually start constructing the circuit board. So I'll see you there. Make sure you follow Notes and Volts on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you really want to help out, I have a Patreon account. Okay, I'll see you next time.